Hello everyone, welcome back to the Brahma Engine devlog. Not long ago I was asked about how I'm reprojecting the scene from this to this, meaning that the uh, vertical look rendered with my span buffer based uh, rendering method is uh, rendered such a way that the line of horizon simply shifted as long as you rotate uh, the camera upwards or downwards because uh, the core of the render is limited to 4 degrees of freedom and it can rotate the camera only about uh, this axis single vertical axis and the rest rotations the rest of the rotations uh, should be Model through post processing or another means. Uh, so, this has some advantages uh, in uh, terms of performance uh, boost on rendering some uh, <coughs> uh, surfaces and height maps. You can see that height maps are displayed. Uh, on the screen with the uh, uh, columns remaining vertical strictly uh, aligned with the uh, screen uh, columns so they could uh, take advantage from uh, span buffers that I remember for each column uh, or which pixels were filled and which weren't filled so there could uh, do efficient uh, hidden surface removal this way so how uh, in this case I'm projecting uh, the scene so I can uh, view look around freely view the zen point and uh, uh, even see what is going on backwards direction well uh, let's turn on the vertical loop but disable the transform so we can see what is going on with the off screen buffer that the frame is rendered <coughs> prior to being uh, reprojected to the final frame in this way so this trapezoid shaped uh, tapered uh, version of the scene is transformed uh, to fill the entire screen and uh, after this we get, are getting a correct perspective and uh, uh, the frame gets split uh, in the process uh, by the engine depending on the angle of our camera rotation this is done because if we didn't do the splits as long as we look further uh, off the horizon and the pitch angle becomes bigger uh, the level of detail becomes increasingly uneven and after we reproject such a frame it gets uh, very sharp at the near the zenith point but the rest of the frame is blurry and wacky and it's completely unusable unless we split uh, the, our scene uh, let's say into four pieces uh, at, the, at the must uh, because uh, more uh, <coughs> tiles or uh, vertically stacked uh, portions could uh, lead uh, to degraded performance and this uh, can uh, affect performance if uh, in some circumstances but as long as we are keep uh, the scene well mm. split uh, frame is split into eight pieces if we take uh, the uh, backwards uh, view into the account so it looks like this four 
uh, chunks so uh, each for each uh, side of the viewing so uh, this is how I'm getting uh, the correct perspective while being limited to by the four degrees of freedom uh, light score but uh, overall performance loss is not b big but they are getting these strange artifacts because uh, as you can see uh, the near z portions near the zenith become uh, really distorted the taper is extreme uh, at the in to medicate this uh, I mean would need another projections that would fill uh, the, these triangular uh, sectors of the frame and uh, of course it's doable that it, it, it would require another uh, method of projection and uh, as long as we are, are projecting uh, horizontal lines and it's very fast and it doesn't doesn't cause much frame rate losses and it can be even faster because we are feeling less uh, pixels uh, at, in the off-screen buffer uh, for example if we are tapering the frame this way and uh, of course it uh, will lead to degraded quality and sharpness some angles and this can be noticed in some noticeable in some uh, circumstances but overall uh, while using anti-aliasing this anti-aliasing method is uh, based on screen bubble and temporal integration with the uh, previous frames so it's very efficient and doesn't require additional uh, processing and it relies simply on uh, persistence of vision and uh, the subtle flicker uh, becomes unnoticeable if the uh, frames are uh, success frames are similar enough what next? It, uh, the actually, to attain uh, six uh, full six degrees of freedom, we need to do double transform, and screen screen tilt is done as the next stage of uh, projection of the off-screen buffer using another off-screen buffer of the same, reusing the original frame buffer to save on memory. In this, in this case, the scene uh, undergoes double transform, leading to additional loss of sharpness. But uh, as long as we uh, carefully select uh, each dimensions, uh, it uh, shouldn't be too much uh, cause uh, discomfort or something. Undesirable artifacts. So uh, the screen uh, rotation post processing effect is actually the pipeline is uh, uh, can make can do a variety of effects at the same time using a single pass. For example, it can. Uh, Simulate camera noise and uh, diffraction limited objects. If we close the aperture too much, the image becomes uh, noisy and blurry due to due to diffraction limit and uh, camera noise. As the ISO goes uh, to high values. 
everything like in real optical systems and uh, also this uh, can pipeline can uh, do a vignette effect uh, using like sign power low uh, like in real uh, optical systems and uh, vignette is carefully dithered to reduce bending and uh, is uh, quite uh, realistic and uh, not that slow if I'm done in uh, multi threads, multiple threads or uh, some this just the same uh, shading tables that the rest of the uh, uh, in-game shading uh, right in, in the palette uh, limited to 256 colors uh, I've uh, done a IHD already uh, version of shading tables uh, so they could uh, be uh, working with uh, my HDR system that use uh, another shading scale that gets at uh, uh, four shades per uh, aperture stop or another power of two shades uh, so may it might be two shades or four or even a 16 if we want uh, grayscale image or RGB color, true color and could be also supported in the near future by the same uh, system and same uh, framework and rendering pipeline so, and, and the same screen rotation uh, effect can also incorporate a uh, viral distortion that is uh, done uh, using the same off-screen buffer as uh, with the tilting it also introduces some barrel distortion or it could be uh, percussion distortion that looks uh, exactly the opposite of the barrel distortion and uh, the field of field of view gets corrected automatically to match the original scale this also could lead to additional loss of sharpness at the center of the frame so, so, so use this this uh, the, the care or uh, about uh, 6 or uh, 6, 3 to 6% is should be quite a nice touch for uh, say RC uh, cars or uh, airplane, so you, you could see uh, from the onboard camera uh, some distorted view. Uh, well, so that's uh, what uh, goes going on about the uh, post processing with Primal Engine so stay tuned for more videos about my latest progress uh, and uh, see you next time bye bye